Okay, so looking at this um, uh, trig identity number four, and uh, this is what most people would consider to be the most difficult one along with the sign rule, which we've already proved, which was the third, second trig identity. So there are two to really not confuse here. There's the one that is cos A plus B and cos A minus B. One of them's really, really easy. One of them's really more difficult, not impossible. Um, and just to identify which one is which, I always remember, well, which one would you consider to be more difficult? One with a, or what's more difficult? Subtraction or addition? Look, it's, it's marginal, but subtraction people do consider to be more difficult. So, cos A minus B is the more difficult of the two. So we are going to do cos A minus B here today. But I'd recommend going and looking at cos A plus B immediately afterwards. So, green box again, what you need to remember, focus on the green box, and then the rest of it will come with repetition and practice. Draw your unit circle. You're going to draw your two angles, A and B. Make A the bigger of the two angles, so make A bigger than B, because we want it to be A minus B, remember, and we want there to be an actual positive number in there. And we're going to have two points, cos A sine A, cos B sine B, and they're not one or not B cos A sine A so there's no number here where there was in the previous proof and we're going to use the distance formula using the distance formula and we're going to equal it to the distance using the cosine formula okay so as always we need a really good diagram so we had our unit circle we have our angle alpha really useful to put it in the second quadrant that makes it look really nice and our angle b here excuse me wasn't alpha it was just a and our angle b here radius one radius one important to note those two in because now we know when we look at it in the triangle over here on the right hand side we know two lengths of the triangle really really useful we have a point p up here you could call it anything you want well, i'm calling it p and we know it's cos A sine A because it relates to the angle. And here, cos B sine B because it again relates to the angle. I'm calling it P and Q. So I've just drawn out the triangle here with what we had. And um, what did point number three say? Was to use the distance formula. To distance formula between here, point P and point Q. And then equal it to the distance use uh, found using the cosine formula okay so find pq squared using cosine rule and the distance formula so i like to do this in tandem beside each other okay so on the left hand side i'll talk to the distance formula first we have our two points so cos a sine a cos b sine b using the distance formula so x1 y1 x2 y2 Fill it into the distance formula, and that is the distance uh, between P and Q. Is the square root of uh, cos B minus cos A squared plus sine B minus sine A squared. Square both sides, so now I have PQ squared here on the left, and I've gotten rid of the square root on the right-hand side. Just in the, in the blue writing here, just the first step to multiplying this out. Be very careful when trying to multiply it out. People do make mistakes. Here, it's really easy to make a, a slip in this uh, proof, so be very careful. And remember, cos B by cos B is cos B squared. Cos B by cos A, you'd just be left with cos A, cos B. They don't really get multiplied together. We just put them beside each other, but I'll talk about that in a second. The cosine formula. Making sure the, uh, the side we're looking for, A, is opposite the angle that we know. Now, what angle do we know? We know this angle. So this is going to be our side that is opposite, and this side is called PQ. So PQ squared, filling it in for A. We knew the two sides of the triangle were one and one. The two sides of the triangle again, one and one. And the angle that we're referring to is A minus B. Multiply it out, you're not really left with much. So I've highlighted that I have PQ squared and PQ squared, so I equal PQ squared to PQ squared. And I get a long piece of maths here, step by step. I get a long piece of maths here, so blue underlined, 
cos b by cos b, as I said here, cos b by cos b, cos b squared, cos b by minus cos a is minus cos a cos b. We like to keep it in alphabetical order here. Similar here, cos a by cos b, minus cos a cos b, minus by minus is plus, cos a by cos a is cos squared a. The purple gets multiplied out in a very similar manner to the blue. Okay, so what I would recommend is writing this bracket out twice, and then go sine b by sine b, sine b squared, sine b by minus sine a will be minus sine a sine b, minus sine a by sine b, minus sine a sine b, sine minus sine a by minus sine a, minus by minus is plus, sine a by sine a, sine squared a, right hand side, nothing changes. So I've highlighted in beige these two sections here, because cos b, cos squared b and sine squared b, we know will band together to give us one from uh, the very first derivation, and we know cos squared a and sine squared a is also equal to one. Okay, so I've grouped them together here, and it gives one, one, and look, it cancels with the two ones on the other side. So what are we left with? Anything that we can do to both sides now? We can reorder them, so we are getting rid of the minuses. We're really just manipulating and multiplying by minus one. At this point, I would divide by two, divide everything by two, and then that's the proof done, QED. Now, it is long, and what I will say is that it is very easy from here to make a slip. So I would highly recommend you practice, write it out a, a good few times, and in particular, multiplying out there, going from the blue to the blue, and purple to the purple, is where most people would make the mistake. Hopefully you, f hopefully you found the video helpful.